yeah, my name is, is Peter, and I did, I guess, most of the analysis on uh, the the long term strategies of the Baltic states. So, if someone has a issue with the results, then I guess I'm the one that um, you should talk to. Um, and uh, I guess we didn't know exactly who was going to uh, show up today, so I thought I would give a bit of a kind of overview of the long-term strategies, although I think everyone kind of knows this, that um, every country in the EU is obliged to do a national energy and climate plan and a long-term strategy, and they, they differ in terms of the time horizon, so the NECP is for 10 years, the LTS is until 2050, in the coverage, um, the NECP is really only looking at energy, whereas the LTS is for the whole economy, and also in terms of the kind of guidance that was given by the EU, because the uh, the LTS uh, template, or what is uh, necessary to include, is, is much more vague, and there was no kind of like EU assessment to, to make the process more rigorous, like there was for the NECPs. Um, and I, I just copied out also what was actually in the guidelines for the uh, uh, LTSs, um, what each country was meant to include, um, based on Annex 4 of the of the, the regulation, um, and that was five different kind of main topics. So an overview um, of how the strategy was developed, and then content, which includes targets for greenhouse gas reductions and renewable energy and energy efficiency, and then also um, a sectoral breakdown um, of I think I think they were integrated together, agriculture and LULUCEF, but of, of five different sectors. Then details on the, the financing and the socio-economic impacts of the plans, and also um, it was specified that any sort of modelling that had been uh, that had taken place to inform the plans should also be included in the in the documents. Um, and I had a look yesterday at how many different countries have submitted their LTSs, and it's still only 22 of, of 27, despite the fact that the uh, deadline was two years, two and a half years, I think, ago now. Um, and they also vary quite a lot, as I think we all know, in terms of the, the length and the content. So uh, the longest one I think I've seen is the French one, which is, is close to 200 pages, and then the, the Estonian one is, is, is eight pages. Um, so you have this really big variety in terms of what has been included. And in fact, some countries such as Lithuania have already updated theirs. I think Hungary have also updated theirs. But uh, kind of the environment, um, the environment on the environment is, is not static. And, and we know that over the past two years, there have been quite a few different um, uh, factors that have have led to most countries um, being in a position where they now need to subsequently update their strategies again. And, and that's kind of what the purpose of, of this analysis is, because hopefully we can start a conversation or, or look at kind of the best practices from lots of different countries so that people can kind of pool the expertise and, and we can kind of raise the, the standard of the LTSs or put a bit more emphasis on them. So that was kind of uh, about the LTSs, and, and I will also just include a tiny bit of background on the, the energy and um, emissions uh, in the three countries. Um, I'm sure everyone already knows this anyway, but uh, as most countries do, all three countries in the Baltic states have uh, quite high dependency on fossil fuels. What is different is that in Estonia, this is mainly through oil and petroleum products because of the oil shale industry here, whereas in Latvia and Lithuania, a bit more natural gas is used. They also all have quite a big emphasis on, on bioenergy. Um, and when you look at the electricity sectors in particular, you see this um, really big dependency from Estonia on oil shale. You also see in, in Latvia, there's quite a lot of hydropower, and in Lithuania, and, and also to, in Estonia to an extent, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, wind power coming online. And again, you see that uh, Latvia and Lithuania are using gas and Estonia is, is, is not. But the, the other thing to, um, to note here is uh, well, partly, as we all know from the really high prices, uh, the um, amount of production uh, in the free countries is not sufficient. So there's quite a lot of electricity that's coming from, from, from the Nordic countries also. 
Um, and in terms of emissions, we've seen that all three countries have seen quite big decreases, at least since 1990. Um, for Estonia and Lithuania, this is, uh, has persisted throughout the entire period um, to, to, to two years ago. Um, whereas for Latvia, the emissions have actually started to rise. And, and the reason, I think, is because um, of the Lulusev sink, which has been going down consistently in Latvia and also in Estonia since, uh, since 1990. Whereas in Lithuania, I think it's most recently been increasing. Um, all countries also have uh, increasing emissions in, I think, agriculture and transport, which is, I think, quite, quite commonly seen throughout the EU, whereas the power sector is, 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 is going down. Um, and then just to give a general overview before we go into things in more detail, the three countries differ quite a lot in terms of uh, when the strategies were adopted and, and what has actually included them. So for es Estonia, one thing to point out is that when we were doing our analysis, um, we know that the Estonia 2035 document came out and that is the one that includes the ambition for climate neutrality. So we also, um, we mainly looked at the Estonian LTS, but as this was published such a long time ago and because things have changed so much, we also submit, um, supplemented it with anything we could find in the Estonia 2035 document. Um, for Latvia, um, we used the LTS that was published in 2019, and for Lithuania, we used the one that was published last year. And we can see that the, the length of the strategies is, is really different. So if we look at the original Estonian document, it's, it's eight pages, the Latvian one is 55, and the Lithuanian one is 35. And in, in terms of um, what they include, we also see quite big differences. But uh, yeah, I'll come on to that. I'll come on to that in a little bit. Um, and you will also see in the subsequent slides um, some tables with different scoring in, and I wanted to just sort of um, explain how we came up with that scoring. So there's, uh, it's a three-point scale for each different category that we looked at, and these categories are the categories from the governance regulation that we've expanded slightly. So a country would get three points if they've included a lot of detail on a specific, specific sector to such an extent that a different country could look at their strategy and, and use it as the basis for forming their own strategy. Um, two points are given if they've included most of the elements that we've looked for, but not everything, so it's not fully comprehensive. And one point if um, the section was only described very briefly um, in qualitative language or was not included at all. So um, examples more specifically for the different sectors is what maybe we were looking for for a score of three would be that there was um, a clear kind of uh, series of, of targets for how decarbonisation would take place for a specific sector, as well as background and trends for what would take place if different policies were not put into effect. Um, for, for financing and enabling policies and measures, um, there'd be a score of three for investment if, if this was clearly described in the document for the whole of the different sectors. If it was only partially described for one sector, then maybe there'd be a score of two. And if there was no kind of detail on investment and what the costs of, of the decarbonisation would be, then there'd be a score, score of one. Um, and similarly for the, uh, for, the other, for the other categories. So... Um, we start with a kind of a look at the general information and targets for the different countries. So in terms of um, how closely the different countries kept to the governance regulation, we gave each a score of two. And that was because most of the things that should have been included were included, but not everything. So for instance, um, Latvia and, Lif and Estonia didn't include details on the, uh, the renewable energy share in 2050, for example. Um, but this kind of also masks differences that we will see later that uh, on, on, this, on this kind of overall thing, the strategies scored quite similar, but that, that's partly because of how we were assessing them. There are very big differences in terms of what is actually included. Um, and a, a final thing that I uh, want to emphasize here is all three countries, particularly Lithuania and, and, and to a smaller extent Latvia, included quite a lot of detail on adaptation, which is something that is important to include, but wasn't actually in the, in the governance regulation. Uh, moving on, I just copied out all of the targets that we could find. And you can see that, yeah, Lithuania has 
kind of targets for everything that was required, whereas Latvia and Estonia have this headline target of uh, climate neutrality by 2050, but are missing in terms of the renewable energy share and the energy efficiency, efficiency share by 2050. Um, they all kind of have targets that are needed for 2030, although from, for Estonia, we had to take this from the Estonia 2035 document, so it's for 2035 rather than 2030. Um, and uh, a lot of these targets are kind of just taken from the NECP, although this is not the case for Lithuania. I think some of the targets for 2030 were actually upgraded in the LTS compared to what they were in the NECP because the LTS was the newer document in that case. Um, and then when it comes to kind of the bulk of the strategies, looking at the different pathways and measures for the uh, different uh, sectors, we scored mm, most countries mainly two. I actually, uh, I'm sorry to say for Estonia, recently downgraded the scores from two to one because Estonia does talk about basically all of these sectors. But I wanted to emphasize that there was quite a big difference between Estonia, which in the original LTS just had some qualitative detail compared to Latvia and Lithuania, which had much more detail in terms of the uh, sectoral breakdown. But uh, even Latvia and Lithuania could have included more detail. So for instance, it was difficult in the Lithuanian strategy to see um, a lot of modeling details or sort of quantitative details about what the situation was in the past. And so there were loads of targets, but I found it difficult to understand how um, ambitious the targets were because I didn't know what the starting point was. Um, and for, for Latvia, the, there was a similar, a, well, a slightly different problem in that there was a good kind of description of what the sector was like, but in terms of the, the breakdown in, of what the sector is going to look like in the future, there was a bit less detail. The, this kind of existed at a higher level and, and a little bit in terms of the um, uh, future scenario, but it was not entirely clear how, how those numbers were arrived at. And there was also um, beneath kind of the targets and what was going to change, there was not that much detail in terms of how countries were going to attempt to get there. And so that made the strategies to me read more as kind of aspirations of where they would like to go and not kind of sort of strategic guidelines of what needs to take place in order to get there. Um, which is what you may be found in some of the other strategies in other parts of the, in other parts of the EU. Um, when it came to financing and enabling policies and measures, uh, this was a case, the case where Latvia scored free because they clearly included that in the um, LTS. Although for the, for the Latvian case, it was also a bit difficult because it felt like um, modeling had been done on the the, how climate neutrality would be achieved, but it wasn't really included in the LTS. So they just said that this is what it will cost to reach climate neutrality, but there wasn't the kind of this detail. So it was kind of difficult to know how they'd got to that figure or what it actually represented. Uh, Lithuania and Estonia didn't really include the in investment needs at all. Um, all three countries also could have included a lot more detail in terms of where this financing is going to come from. And I think this is one thing that we will see when we look at the, the Visegrad countries. They included a bit more detail here. Um, and the final thing is all three countries talked, I would say, more than the average across the, the union in terms of the importance of research and development and in terms of um, upgrading the level of research and upgrading the level of specialists in the country. And, and Lithuania included um, the most detail and, and they got a score of three in this category. Um, in terms of the economic assessment, this was something else that the countries could have really uh, strengthened and hopefully will in the future. Um, it's important to perhaps point out that all three countries um, have GDPs per capita that are a little bit below the EU average. And so there are a lot of, um, the, the, there's a lot of argument that could be made that this is a really important category for these, for these three countries because uh, we need to know how different areas of society are going to be impacted by the transition. Um, and we found that there was not so much detail on this, and, and this is something that could really be strengthened. And particularly when it came to kind of the distributive aspects, so who is going to be impacted and in what way are they going to be impacted? This is something that could really be strengthened. 
And uh, I, I actually um, took this table from the Visegrad assessment where most of these things were included by quite a lot of the countries. And you can see that in the Baltic states, beyond en energy security, a lot of things are missing. Um, Latvia includes the most detail because it includes kind of this um, assessment of what they think is going to happen to GDP. But this is really a section that could also be strengthened along with kind of the sectoral pathways. And then to look at um, preparation and implementation, uh, the key point here, I think, uh, is the analytical tools, because I think this really feeds back into what was missing in terms of the uh, economic assessment and also the, the pathways for the different sectors. It was not always clear what kind of modelling the different countries had done. And it felt like in a lot of cases, modeling hadn't been done. And if modeling had been done, it was just for a business as usual scenario. In some cases, there were figures that were included, but it was really difficult to, under know, to understand what those figures represented. There might be, for instance, I think in the, the Latvian and the Estonian cases, there were extrapolations to 2050, but it wasn't really clear if they represented rigorous modeling or they were just kind of to guide the eye to what the situation should be like in 2050. Um, I think for the Latvian case, it felt, like I said before, that this kind of climate neutrality modeling had taken place, but it wasn't included in the LTS. It didn't really say where it came from, and that made it difficult to give it a higher score. Whereas for Lithuania and Estonia, it felt like there was less modeling that was included. Yeah, and, and like I said, what, what was included was not always um, really well described. Um, and yeah, for someone, for someone from my background, that's uh, really important that if you include a figure and you have that in your LTS, then it should really state what that represents and how it was derived. Um, and a final point is in the Lithuanian strategy, and this is something perhaps we can talk about today. It's stated at one point that modeling capa capabilities needed to be strengthened. And... I think if the reason that there was not as much modelling as in some other countries in, in the European Union was because that capability was, was not easy to find in, in the region, then this is something that really has to be dealt with quickly because the best LTSs, at least in my opinion, had quite significant modelling aspects and, and this was something that was, that was not included so much here. Um, and then to move on to governance and, governance and consultation. This was included in all of the countries to some extent, um, especially in Lithuania and, and Estonia. Um, public consultation was also included, but, well, at least in two of them, but it wasn't always clear um, what influence this had had on the strategies. So, for instance, um, in the Estonian original LTS, it wasn't included, but in the Estonia 2035 document, it was included and said what kind of consultations had taken place. But to get a score of three, it maybe would have had to have said that this was taken on board. And based on this consultation with stakeholders, this changed. Um, but overall, this was quite a reasonable uh, section, I would say. Um, and one thing I wanted to highlight, um, which I think is a little bit unique in the, uh, in the countries, is that Estonia developed this, uh, this tree of truth in English where um, anyone can go and see how they are performing in terms of a huge variety of different indicators. And that includes indicators that are relevant for, for decarbonisation, such as the greenhouse gas emissions or the renewable energy share. Um, and... I think this was this was really a really good thing to include and it makes it kind of easy to have this accountability of the strategies, even if this was not necessarily devised for the LTSs in, in, in general. Um, so yeah, to come to the general conclusions, um, there was a high amount of heterogeneity. The, the difference was between the strategies was uh, really big, as I think we found for the whole of the EU. Um, all of the countries do adopt the, the really crucial target of climate neutrality by 2050. But beyond this kind of headline target, there were quite big differences. In terms of the, the sectoral detail, um, no country has provided what we would like to see in order to get the highest score in our assessment. Um, and this is something that could also be strengthened. And, and, and this partly, I think, probably comes from the, the modeling weaknesses that each country 
didn't really include enough detail in terms of the modeling. And, and this kind of probably made the sectoral detail and the socio, you know, socio-economic aspects weaker than they perhaps could have been. Um, and also there was a limited specificity in terms of um, details, especially after 2030, in terms of what direction the countries want to go in, in terms of reaching their goals, which for the best strategies, um, was included, like for instance, um, for, 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 for Greece, for, for Portugal, it's really clear how they want to go about reaching climate neutrality, how they want to go about decarbonizing their energy systems, whereas for the three Baltic states, this was a little bit um, opaque. Um, research and development was also highlighted, as I said, in all three countries really strongly, um, but could be made a bit stronger if different funding sources and research programs were included. Um, collaboration, I guess, is, is one of the reasons why we're here today. Regional collaboration was not really discussed about in the different strategies, although I think it was to some extent in the NECPs. So this is something that, again, is not required in the governance regulation, but could, could be strengthened in, in principle. And governance and consultation is, is generally included, but uh, it could be made a bit stronger if the impacts of the consultation were also shown in the strategies. And from these kind of uh, yeah uh, conclusions, we also developed a series of recommendations, which I've, I've kind of already talked about. Um, and I guess the, the clearest one that would really help for every country is if the EU decided to mm, place a bit more emphasis on the long-term strategies. I mean, these are the kind of documents that are telling each country how they're going to reach climate neutrality. And, and, and a lot of the things that countries are going to have to do um, have really long lead times. So it's really important that at least some of the decisions or the general directions that they want to head in are made now. And, and the, the EU could, I think, place a bit more emphasis on this. Um, and then yes, coverage in terms of sectors and comprehensive modeling. These are, these are things that I've, I've talked about that could really be included in the strategies in a bit more detail. Um, and also socioeconomics, especially uh, what the costs are going to be and how those costs are going to be shared between society and how that's going to impact households would be really important, I think, to include in the next uh, round of updates. Uh, yeah, and then the other things are, are things that I've, that I've, already, I've already talked about. So, um, yeah, I think uh, that's it for, uh, for our assessment of the strategies and um, I think we have yeah, time to take questions if anyone has questions on our, our, our analysis.